When hundreds of refugees tragically drowned in the Mediterranean Sea and the Indian Ocean, Canadians had a good reason to feel the shockwaves. Thousands of Canadians have refugee stories of their own, including many tracing back to the Vietnamese boat people of the 1970s. And while the need remains great, Canada has imposed new caps, new costs, new restrictions, and last year, resettled the fewest number of refugees since the original refugee boat crisis. Coming up, meet those with an on-the-ground perspective as we ask, is Canada losing its compassion for refugees? This is Context, the show that looks at life beyond the headlines. Well, there are more than 15 million refugees in the world today, people forced to flee their homes because of persecution. Last year, Canada offered a permanent home to just over 23,000 refugees. Refugees to Canada can be sponsored from overseas or they can claim asylum at our borders. With us from Ottawa is Canada's Minister of Citizenship and Immigration, Chris Alexander. Welcome to Context. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. The images of refugees at crisis in the Mediterranean Sea, you know, it does remind us of Canada's generous response to help the Vietnamese boat people. The Mediterranean is being called the Sea of Shame. What comes to mind as you consider that? I am reminded of the inability of the international community to end the conflict in Syria. You know, more people are dying there on a monthly basis, on an annual basis, than uh, than died in Afghanistan when I was there. It's a very, very serious conflict. And yes, it's great to see the chemical weapons being, uh, being dealt with by concerted international action, but this conflict is still generating huge numbers of displaced persons inside Syria, huge numbers of refugees now in Jordan, Lebanon, Turkey, and other countries. And, and that's where our response needs to be. Uh, and, and I'm very proud to be part of a government that is among the top two or three donors to relief efforts in the region. Uh, we are also the largest, we have um, made available the largest number of spaces for government assisted uh, and privately sponsored refugees of any country so far. But Minister, let's get back to the need. 2.1 million Syrian refugees. If 1,300 is what we're talking about, let's go back to the comparison with the Vietnamese crisis. Some would argue that this is even more tragic for children especially and we're only going to take 1,300? The UNHCR is not calling for that. They're calling for humanitarian efforts on an unprecedented scale in the region to ensure that, um, that uh, Lebanon, Jordan, Turkey and other countries are able to handle this load because even if we took much larger numbers, we would not be able to handle the needs of five million, six million Syrians displaced inside the country, and two or three million displaced outside. And, and, and in UNHCR, in 2012, rated Canada the most generous country for resettlement of refugees, bar none, in 2012, on a per capita basis. So we are at the very front rank uh, of refugee policy. We are doing the right things. We have ambitious levels for 2014 again. Uh, but we, on Syria, have to be among the the, 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 the top donors in responding locally in the region because that's what the international community has decided to do. It's the only way to handle the needs of millions of refugees. Well, I would argue it depends on which scale you rank it on. You're quoting UNHCR, but on a per capita scale, we do rank 33rd in the world for refugee welcome based on our population. Bill C-31, our new immigration bill, has been called horrific measures on the vulnerable, it's been called harsh and unjust. How does that sit with you, sir? Well, uh, anyone who calls an effort to ensure bogus refugee claims don't clog up our system horrific uh, is really inviting disaster. We, we do not want institutions that are open to abuse. But we are still the lowest per capita and we are the lowest on our refugee acceptance that we have been in 25 years years. There has been a shift in our compassion, hasn't there? 32 countries you're talking about that are, that are ahead of us uh, are not resettling refugees. They are receiving refugees because they have 
war and conflict in a neighboring country. The lead country in that list is Jordan. We are ahead of the United States, ahead of all the major countries of Europe in refugee resettlement. Canadians are extremely generous. 10%, upwards of 10% of our immigration program is devoted to refugees, government assisted, privately sponsored, and humanitarian and compassionate cases. That has not changed. What has changed is that we are getting the bogus claims out of the system to focus on the real claims. And I can't understand why anyone wouldn't welcome that. All right. Well, those are exactly the questions we'll be putting to our guests today who are working with refugee care. We also have uh, refugees in our studio audience. Minister Alexander, thank you and bless you in your complicated work. Thank you. It is tough work uh, and meeting the needs. I mean, the Syrian refugee flows are unprecedented since the Second World War with the perhaps the exception of Afghanistan. Minister Alexander, we will leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thanks for your interest in this. It's going to continue to be an area of uh, focus for our government. A conservative government did the right thing for Vietnamese boat, boat people in 1979-80. A conservative government today is continuing to do the right things for vulnerable groups in these categories around the world. And now we have Janet Dench, Executive Director of the Canadian Council for Refugees, on the line with us from Montreal. Uh, Ms. Dench, we just heard from the Minister of Citizenship and Immigration that the UN rated Canada number one last year in the volume of resettled refugees per capita. How do you respond to that? Well, I think it's a bit ironic uh, if we we're rated number one last year, because last year was actually a very disappointing year for Canada in terms of resettlement. Uh, we fell f far short of the targets that the government had set, both for government-assisted refugees. There were 2,000 places short of what we should have been, and we were uh, 1, 000, more than 1,000 short in terms of privately sponsored refugees. So that's a, a large number of uh, refugees that need a permanent home, need protection, who were uh, not offered a new home in Canada. Uh, and we were you know, coming down to some of the lowest numbers uh, that we've seen in decades uh, resettled and, to and Canada. And his argument for why we are at the lowest number in 20 years for our refugee sponsorship has been about uh, eliminating bogus claims. What would you say to that? I think it does enormous damage uh, to uh, refugees, to, to how they're viewed in Canada. Uh, it does enormous damage to Canada's reputation internationally when we sink to these kinds of depths of uh, throwing names around. Uh, refugees, we have to remember, are people who have been forced to leave their countries because they're despised in their countries, uh, they're mistreated, they're treated as less than fully human. And it is absolutely essential that other countries uh, say we're going to do something different. We're going to treat you as decent human beings. We're going to treat you with dignity and with respect. And okay. when you start using language like bogus, unfortunately, we're siding on, with the persecutors, really. The astounding number of refugee deaths at sea have compelled us to ask, what is Canada doing to ease this current refugee crisis? You, you would say just not enough, I guess. I think it's it's very disappointing as, as Canadians we like to think of ourselves and we have in many ways been a leader in terms of refugee protection and it's something we can be proud of. Uh, but in the last few years there's been a really uh, a change in direction. Uh, the doors have been closing, the rules have become much uh, tighter than the numbers of refugees that we are welcoming to Canada has gone dramatically down. So there is a, a very different attitude, a different priority. Uh, Janet Dench, thank you very much. You've put uh, the flashlight on 23,000 people a day moving into the refugee highway. Thank you very much. We'll thank hear more much. from others. Thank you. And that is the view from the Canadian Council of Refugees. And Sheldon, you've got an opinion. Thank you, Lorna. And here's our question actually for you at home. Should Canada ease its current restrictions on refugees or tighten them? Tell us what you think and why. Please send your answers by phone, email, Facebook or Twitter. And I'm still curious why there's such a shift in attitudes towards refugees from the Vietnamese sponsorship days to today. We've got two great experts going to answer that for us next.